Hi scholars, let's look at TEAG 4.2F. I can compare and order decimals using concrete and visual models to the hundreds. So before I show you how to compare... Okay, so first thing you need to know is there are two place values after the decimal. Now when you get to fifth grade, the fifth grade TEAG has thousandths, but we're just going to focus on tenths and hundredths. And the way I tell my students is that suppose you had... 45 cents. What's a way you could represent it? And so they'll tell me like four dimes and five pennies. I know there's many other ways. You can do um, eight nickels and five pennies, but for the purpose of this lesson, we're going to stick with dimes and pennies. And so when I tell them about dimes, I tell them, like, well, how many dimes does it take to make a dollar? Or what is a dime worth? And they told me, they explained to me that one dime is 10 cents, and that, and this one dime is like one tenth of a dollar. Because it takes 10 dimes to make one dollar. So when you have one dime, you have one tenth of a dollar. So then we relate that tenth to this as the tenths place, that when you have 45 cents, that's four dimes and five pennies. So you have four tenths of a dollar or 40 cents in this place value. So we connect that with that. And so because it's called tenths, we use the tens block to represent tenths. Now when you get questions about place value for decimals, it will say, like, in the question, what visual represents this decimal. And so, you know, if it's whole numbers, this is tens. But in decimals, it's going to be tenths. So that will be right there. Okay? And then um, I tell my students, well, if you have five pennies, what do you know about that? And they'll say, well, one penny is one cent. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you what one cent looks like because I want you to make sure you understand the difference. A dime is this, ten cents. That's one tenth because that's in the tenths place. That's one hundredths because it's in the hundredths place. So they tell me, well, one cent or one penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. So that's why for this place value, we use this to represent it, okay? Because a hundred of these makes one of these. Think of this as your dollar. Think of this as your ones place, okay? I know that's really strange. So, like, let me go back a step real quick. Let me fix this. Okay, think of this for a second. This is 1, okay? In my other lessons, I told you that this is 1, okay? But now since we're going into decimals, you're going into numbers that are less than 1. So if I took this as representing 1, and I'm trying to show what's less than 1, I have to, you know, physically cut these to show you that, you know, oh, 10 pieces can be... This can be cut into 10 pieces. This can be cut into 100 pieces. So then for decimals, we think of this as a temporary like replacement of this for the $1. Okay? So this is my ones place when it's, when it's regarding decimals. Okay? And then these are my dimes because 10 dimes make $1. All right, 10 of these make a dollar. So that's why this is called tenths. And then a hundred of these make a dollar. A hundred cents make a dollar. So if I were to, you know, have a hundred of these, then they would all fit. So that's why this is the hundredths block. So this is what we would call 10 cents. And so you can also... Oops, sorry. You can also think of this 
with zero hundreds place, and you know that's still basically ten cents. We call it one tenth, okay? And if there's a zero, then you say ten hundreds. But essentially, you know, it's still one dime. It's still ten cents. So then when you compare it with this, okay, this is one cent or one hundredth. So this is more than this. This is this, okay? And then this, when it's in the hundredths place, you're even smaller. And you know what? When you get to this, the thousandths, it's this. But this is like tiny you're you know this is dimes pennies and this is like you know a penny cut up into a thousand pieces or something like that like it's very very small so the farther you go down the decimal line the decimal place value the smaller the value of that number is so when you have something here and nothing here and nothing here but something here this has more value because this is the tenths place. Just think more dimes and think of this as pennies, okay? So I'm going to go through some visual models for each one so you can see what they look like. And I'm going to talk about strategies on how to compare decimals. Okay, so let's look at this one. Because it's in the tenths place, you have to say four tenths. And so you would have four of these... To represent it okay I like to always kind of turn these around because it's only tenths we don't want to see the the little pieces in there we're, we're trying to think of just sticks and so your picture would look like this this is your visual model I have four one two three four out of ten so I have four dimes so it's like four tenths or 40 cents you know money wise when you think of it that way Okay, so then let's look at another one. All right, let's look at this one. So this one is seven tenths because I have seven out of ten shaded in. That's why it's called tenths because these are in tenths. I'm going to keep emphasizing that throughout the video. I just want you to see what the difference is. See, this is cut in hundredths. This is tenths. So when I give my decimal name for this, it's it has to have tenths at the end. When I give my decimal name for this, hundredths will be at the end because this is cut into hundredths. Okay? So when we're comparing decimal, both visuals are the same and they're both in the same place value. Like four tenths compared to seven tenths. What a joke. <laughs> so easy. Here's seven tenths, here's four tenths. Just by looking at how much is colored in, you can tell 7 tenths is greater. So, as far as answering the question, okay, so let's look at 5 tenths and 8 tenths. So here is the visual for 8 tenths, and here is the visual for 5 tenths. Just by looking at it, you can tell 8 tenths covers more on a, you know, essentially a whole or $1 versus 5 tenths. So 8 tenths is greater than 5 tenths. 4 tenths. I have visuals for that. This is 6 tenths. This is 4 tenths. As you can tell, 6 tenths covers more than 4 tenths. So that one wins. Then we have 3 tenths versus 9 tenths. I don't know if I can find my 9 tenths visual. Here we go right there so as you can see nine tenths covers more and then one tenth versus five tenths oh yeah that's five tenths five tenths covers more and then we have six tenths again versus seven tenths so I'm just going to show you like that, that you can see 7 tenths covers more. So sometimes kids get a, li get a little confused. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what a good strategy would be, although on these um, it's pretty easy, but just for future notice, in decimals you're always allowed to put little zeros at the end because you're just saying that there's zero hundreds in that place value. That's all it is. Now that does change the picture. If you were to 
if you were told to tell us, you know, which picture represents six tenths, you have to pick the one that shows tenths in it. But for, for you, you can put a zero at the end when you're doing comparisons, okay? But if they give it to you in the tenths place, you have to pick the picture that has tenths in it, okay? But you're allowed to put zeros when you're comparing and adding and subtracting and things like that. So let's move on to hundredths. So right here we have five hundredths. So that's like five of these, five pennies. Remember, these are pennies because a hundred pennies make a whole. And so this is my visual for five hundredths, okay? When you have five cents, that's what it represents, five cents out of 100 cents, okay? So let's look at... Um, an example in hundredths, another example so we can compare. Looking at my pictures here for hundredths. Let's see. Okay, I like this one. I like this because it brings up a good point. Remember how I told you in the last video that if it ends in the tenths place, then you have to use the tenths picture. But if it ends in the hundredths place, that changes the picture. So this is 50 hundredths. Think of 50 cents in pennies only. Okay? So this represents 50 hundredths. Now, if this did not exist, then it would be, it would be this one. Okay, but because we the they gave us a question with the zero hundredths, that means it's cut into hundredths, 50, 50 hundredths out of 100, 100 pieces. So in this situation, using visuals, I can tell this is more than this. Okay, so my answer would be 50 hundredths is greater than 5 hundredths. Now, I want to also show you something else. Suppose you're given this. I just showed you that the picture is different. This is the picture for five tenths. Okay, this is the picture for five hundredths. Five tenths is still more than five hundredths. And I want you to notice something here. Do you see how these two line up? They're exactly the same value-wise, money value-wise. So I was telling you earlier, like suppose, you know, you're given it in tenths. When you're comparing, you're allowed to put like a little zero there to help you co compare. And so it lets you know that it's like 50 cents versus 5 cents. And so you're able to pick the one with the greater value. So, like, if you've seen my videos on comparing whole numbers, I always tell you to line them up according to place value. So, like, if you were to write this, like, if this is how you were given the question, okay, and you were to write this one on top of the other, it's kind of hard to compare because there's, like, sorry, there is a missing piece. You're allowed to put zeros when it's decimals because you're just saying that there's zero hundreds there. You're just doing that for that purpose. And so now it's so much easier. I'm like, oh, that's like 50 cents and that's like 5 cents. Well, 50 cents is more than 5 cents, so 5 tenths is greater than 5 hundredths, okay? So make sure you really pay attention to that and put zeros where you need to put them and pay attention to what the picture would look like because your, your question might say, which of the following pictures best represents the decimals? So, like, let's say they already give you this, and they say, which shows five tenths greater than five hundredths? Well, you need to be aware that these are the pictures that represent it. Okay, so don't just rely on the zero. You've got to know, oh, that's in the tenths place, so I need a picture with tens, tenths. That's in the hundredths place. I need a picture with hundredths. Or sometimes they'll might even, um, they might... They might have it like this. Or actually, let's say they give it to you like that, and they have this as an answer choice. You can't pick this because they gave this to you in the tense. This is the one that they want.